ZBrush has redesigned the way masks are applied to surfaces by introducing masking brushes. These are a special set of brushes that are found in the brush library. So I've opened the brush flyout library and I'm pressing M for masking. You can see that I now have several types of masking brushes. By choosing one of these, it's automatically mapped to the control key. For example, I'm using the Mask Rect brush to create rectangular masks on the surface of my object. I'm activating radial symmetry with a radial count of 3 uh, just to see if I can come up with some interesting designs using the Mask Rect brush on my surface. Two new features that are available in the Stroke Library are Square, which ensures that my mask is always a perfect square, and also Center, which causes the mask to be generated from the center of the brush as opposed to the corner. Using the Mask Rect brush with Square and Center allows me to position alphas perfectly on the surface of my object. I can switch to the circle stroke type for the masking brush and draw a mask in the shape of ovals on my surface. I'm just holding the control and alt key together to erase parts of the mask. So I'm going to turn on the square option and the center option in the stroke type palette and this ensures that my mask is always a perfect circle when I drag on the surface and that circular mask is generated from the center of where I drag with my brush. Once I've generated a mask for my surface, I can perform actions such as the Inflate Deformer. And this will inflate the parts of the surface that are not masked. In addition, I can create polygroups for my masking. This reorganizes the polygons of the mesh into separate groups, which I can then use to further deform my surface. One trick that I like to do is to delete the lower levels of subdivision and then create group loops Using the group loop fe feature, I'm creating polygroups along the edges of my initial groups. And now by masking these groups, I'm using the inflate deformer again to create a nice clean parting lines for my surface. At this point, I can fill the polygroups with different colors. Let's see what the surface looks like with a metallic material applied. 